Hi, I'm Alexander Lemay. Today we are talking comparative linguistics. Famous German philosopher and the linguist of 1700s, William Humboldt, once said, Languages divide reality, but every language does it differently. What did he mean? Imagine for a minute that you as a human being with your five, some say six senses and your brain that is a processor of what you perceive with those senses are walking in into a completely unnamed reality, plain as this whiteboard. How would you categorize it? How would you perceive it and how would you process it? Right now, this is the area where linguistics, metaphysics, philosophy, religion, and even quantum physics intervene. But we're not going to deviate in any of those areas and just stick with the traditional definition of reality as we're able, as I said earlier, to perceive with our five, six senses and process with our brain. What is number one category you could think about? Large category, think large. Space. And by, by space, I don't mean in a cosmic sense. I mean space as object, matter, and the description of the objects and matter. For example, white cloud, I see, I can perceive white cloud. Next one, human beings are able to recognize past, present, and future category of time. Again, in quantum physics, time, space is the same thing, but we're not gonna deviate there today. Next one, actions. This is very much interconnected with time because all activities take place in time. Next one, interpersonal stuff. We are human beings. We're not just robots who sense information process. We're also capable of another dimensional reality of our emotions, feelings, our wishes, and things like that. So this is just a general overview and just a few main things to name. But today we're only going to focus on the category of time, how different languages see and describe time. There are two main ways languages utilize in order to describe time. Number one is verb conjugation, change in the form of the verb, I did, I do. And number two is words that describe time, like now, today, yesterday. Right now we will focus how English describes time in concrete indicative mood, not subjective or conditional, just indicative for today. English recognizes past, present, and the future. But then English is a little bit more complicated. It has four other categories that will describe how the time, how the action took place in certain time a little bit more precisely. Therefore, we have simple tenses, we have continuous tenses, we have perfect tenses, and we have perfect continuous group. And now we have this neat little breed going on. We have past simple, I did. We have present simple, I do. We have future simple, I will do. We have past continuous, I was doing. Present, I am doing. Future continuous, I will be doing, etc. So English uh, is has a very rich grammatic system of verb conjugations and very precise how it wants to describe an action on the top of this grammatical system of tenses. English also utilizes a rich uh, number of words that describe time like yesterday, today, forever, slowly, time and action description as well. Yesterday, today, forever, slowly, quickly, etc. And now let's travel across English Channel or as some would prefer La Manche and see how another Western European language French divides time. French as in English recognizes past present and future. However, as you see, the grid is quite different. French is very precise how it wants to describe its past action, especially in the, in the written language. Therefore, we have passé simple, passé composé, imparfait, plus que parfait, passé antérieur. 
the good news is most of those languages are used mainly in written language. Another one, présent. Présent is, the meaning of présent is very similar to simple present in English, je parle, I speak, and as well as a present continuous, je parle, uh, I am speaking. Then we have futur and futur antérieur. And today, my goal for you not to become experts on Fra in French conjugation, but just to see the differences, how different even the grid looks by itself. You have just seen that French and English differ quite a bit in the way they describe time. However, if you want a complete paradigm shift, let's travel to East Asia and see how Mandarin describes time. Now, that's a complete paradigm shift, I'm telling you. This sentence, and I am not a Mandarin speaker, therefore I will just show you and will try to pronounce, but those of you who speak Mandarin, please <laughs> forgive my pronunciation. As you see, this phrase looks the same. Wo qi, wo qi, wo qi. It means I go. Chinese as in Fr French, English and other languages recognize it, past, present and the future. However, it does not change the form of the verb. There is no grammatical change. There is no verb conjugation in Chinese. So every when you say I went, you say wo qi. When you say I go, you say wo qi. When you say I will go, you still say wo qi. What changes? Changes, what changes is the lexem, the word that describes time. I went yesterday, I, I go today. I will go tomorrow. It's the same as in English it would sound, I go yesterday, I go today, I go tomorrow. And again, my goal for you today is not to become experts in French, English or Mandarin, but merely to have a small insight in how different languages approach describing reality. Hopefully then, when you start learning a foreign language, language, you will not have a judgmental attitude, but rather be excited about learning something very, very new, very different, different mentality, different mindset.